Good morning, church. Good morning. Woo, this just got real. <laughs> How you guys doing? Doing pretty good? That's good. Hopefully you guys had enough coffee. My name is Tayon. Um, Pastor Gary introduced me. I, I appreciate that. It was beautiful. And uh, thank you guys for letting me uh, be able to speak to you guys. Last time I spoke, I talked about how I feel like every time I preach, I end up getting closer to God and my relationship with God gets stronger because I actually, actually have to depend on God to be able to speak to you guys. And I just, I really appreciate you guys letting me um, speak the word of God to you guys today because I just get so nervous. Like sometimes I stutter, I can't really gather my thoughts. So I really have to rely on God to be able to speak to you guys. And with all those nerves, I was like thinking like, what else I can do to kind of like ease my nerves? And I thought actually about like bringing my dog on stage. And maybe like, <laughs> kind of like petting them while I preach. But I was like, you know, I don't think that would be good, especially with like allergy season coming around. And I don't want everybody sneezing and like coughing. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and throw my dog on the screen, if you guys don't mind. <laughs> yeah, so that's my dog, King. So I had, I had King for about um, six years now. Um, he's, he's, he's young and... King actually lost his eyesight about seven months ago, maybe about seven or eight months ago. And probably, I don't know if your animals are like our animals. In our life, like our animals are part of our family. So we we're naturally pretty hurt by that and somewhat traumatized. And like most of us do when we get like trauma in our lives, I, I start asking God, like, man, God, why did this happen? And I just kind of like ask God why this happened. And then I as I put together this sermon, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to use this story to actually spread the word of God. So that's what I'm going to do today. See, you don't really have to feel sorry for King. He likes doing everything that a dog with eyesight likes doing. He plays. He, well, fetching is a little bit difficult now, but <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not the same. But he plays fight. He plays with toys. Um, and he just he he really still like loves life and he enjoys life. And I still have a lot of fun with him. So you really don't have to feel sorry for him. And he really likes going for walks. Like, that's like his thing is going for walks. And he actually likes going for walks in our neighborhood. And I don't know, some of you guys have been out in our neighborhood. I feel like our neighborhood's kind of, like, dangerous, especially, like, a dark time because it's kind of scary. They've, we've, we've had, like, mountain lion sightings. There's coyotes. Um, there's snakes. I don't really do snakes at all. Speaking of snakes, I actually had a neighbor like knock on my house and she's like, there's a rattlesnake in my house. And I literally almost slammed the door <laughs> in her face. Like I am not, I do not do snakes. I ended up helping her out though. So yeah. But all that stuff is in our neighborhood. And when I go on these walks with King, I'm realizing like, man, he's actually like dependent on me to protect him and guide him. And he actually is aware of all those dangers that are around us and surrounding us, and he's putting his trust into me. And I don't know why I put sunglasses on him. I need to talk to a vet. I just, I think he looks pretty cool with the sunglasses. I call him my little daredevil. But when we go on these walks, he, he puts his trust in me, and I'm, I'm thinking, like, that's similar to our walk, right? When we're, we're, we're going through life, it's, it's, it's very similar, but we're, as we're walking through life, we're putting our trust and to God, right? Because we don't know what dangers are around there, what dangers are around a corner. I know my current problems. I know my current positions and all the things I have to deal with right now, but I still have to put my trust in God and believe that he's protecting me and he's guiding me. And I believe that he's guiding me all the way back till I get home. So today's message is going to be called Faith Walk. Let me, let me pray for about an hour and a half so I can get some courage. <clears throat> Father, I pray that you be with me to hear, and I pray that I hear your word. In your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So I talked about King and how he trusts me. And I, I grew up in the church um, since I was, ever since I can remember. But my, my walk with Jesus have, have looked different over time. And actually took me a while to actually be able to walk with Jesus because I know at times my walk with Jesus was probably somewhat ugly, I would say. And it really took me some time to really learn how to walk with Jesus. 
And I'll give you an example of how it may have looked. Um, if we can play that video. So we can, <laughs> we can kill that video. So that, that's, my, that's my puppy now. Her name is Olive. How much faith do you think she has in us <laughs> on these walks? <laughs> yeah, um, so basically we have her on this lease and she just fights us the whole time. Um, and we set up this, we think we are trying to do something for her and we have her on this lease and she doesn't understand that this lease is actually meant to protect her. And we're actually taking her on these walks and she can't stand to be controlled. She wants to do her own thing um, she hasn't really learned to walk. She hasn't really learned to trust. She hasn't really learned to obey. And in doing so, when we're out in these walks, I'm like, is she really enjoying herself? <laughs> like, is she really, truly enjoying herself? And she really doesn't trust the process that my wife and I have for her. She just wants to do her own thing, but she's really not enjoying herself. I don't know if that sounds familiar to you guys, but me, sometimes, like, my walk, what God looks like that. And I feel like God sometimes, like, maybe just looking down at me, like, like what, are, what are you doing? Like, I want you to walk with me. I want you to trust in me. I want you to trust my plan I have for you. I want you to trust the process. And when I do my own thing, or when I want to try and figure out things on my own, when I have these stresses in life and I'm not really taking it to God, what, what ends up happening is I'm just exhausting myself, similar to my puppy. So I feel like God, what God wants is us to trust the process. God wants us to trust the process. And I'll, I'll explain what, what process is. Process is God's plan. Trust God's plan. Not your mom's plan, not grandma's plan, not the kids' plans, but trust God's plan. God's plan is going to be better, bigger and better than whatever plan we have for ourselves. And when we, when we talk about trusting God's plan and we talk about trusting in God and believing in God, I think it's important to understand faith so where do you guys think we should go to actually have a better understanding about faith? I'm thinking the Bible. So if you would, grab your Bibles. I know some of your Bibles are sitting on 5Gs right now. That's fine. And we're going to go to Hebrews 1.3. Hebrews 1 through 3. So what, what I'm trying to do here is really have a better understanding of what faith is with this scripture. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for, assurance about what we do not see. This is what ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe formed out God's commands so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And to make it simpler, what I get out of this is godly faith is really trust. Godly faith is really trust. And when we have our relationship with God, we really have to trust in God. And when I say godly faith is really trust, I mean Faith is going to involve trusting in God. And I love that my relationship with God revolves around trust because when I trust him, I actually get more faith, which gives me hope. And so scripture speaks to faith being the substance of the unseen. And I'm not preaching like, I don't mean like just the unseen, like blind faith. I'm not preaching to actually just follow anything blindly. What I mean is, is actually find evidence of God actually working in your life that leads you back to trusting into God. And I feel like there's, there's plenty of evidence out there that God does exist and God does have your back. We just have to look for it. There's plenty of evidence in my life that God is working for me. Now, is everything perfect in my life? What do you, what do you guys think? 
you're wrong. Everything is absolutely perfect. No, <laughs> no, everything is not perfect in my life. And I go through trials. I go through tribulations. There's, there's so much that we go through. I mean, my wife is right over here. She'll talk about all the little fires that we have to put out, but we're not doing this alone. There's evidence that God is in our life, helping us along the way. So it's important for us to find evidence in our life that God is working. And you don't have to just look in your own life. There's somebody sitting to your left, to your right, your neighbors. You can look into other people's lives and actually find evidence of God working. So, so find the evidence of God working. And I think I have a slide up there. So we're going to say, find evidence of God work. That's, to me, that's the unseen. That's the hope that I hold on to. Not only, like, that's, that's right there. Find evidence, and that's the hope that I hold on to. And then I have a question. I, I have one question, but bear with me because I'm going to, um, it might be, like, somewhat confusing. Um, and I have sleep apnea, so sometimes my words don't come out right. I actually go to sleep with like that CPAP machine on, and I only set that Darth Vader line like twice. So here is the question I have. Have you ever prayed for something, and that prayer didn't get answered, but like a couple years later or a week later, you're like, man, I'm glad that didn't get answered. So in some weird way, that prayer was answered. Yeah? All right, cool. That happened to me multiple times. And what I think what's happening is like we're taking that prayer to God and we're praying to God. And it's like, this is what I want. And then God's like, this is what you need. Right? And to me, it just feel like God has my back when he does that. I have another question. What if we planned our own life based on the knowledge that we have? Hey Amen, Dennis. Dennis, sorry for not wearing a Hawaii t-shirt. Hawaii Sunday will continue next week. I appreciate it. But yeah, how would that look, right? Like it probably, I would say I wanna, when I grow up, I want to be a police officer. I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a veterinarian. And when we, when we try and outline next week or outline six months from now or outline three years ago, and we try and do that and make that plan with just our knowledge, there's a problem with that because it's so important to tap into God's knowledge because God's knowledge is unlimited. So we plan our life is so, so important that we are making sure and ensuring ourselves that we are tapping into that knowledge because that plan is going to that plan and that outcome for our lives is going to be so much greater. And another point when that prayer, we're sitting back and we pray for something and it doesn't happen. And then we've realized like, man, I'm glad that prayer didn't come true. I feel like if we had a conversation with God, God would be like, see, man, I got you. I got you. And today I'm here to tell you God's got you. God's got you. God's got you. God's got all of us. Like, I wanted to almost see that one, that, that song, like, God's got, he got the whole world in his hands. But it's, 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 so, it's so true. Like, God's got all of us. And God is watching over us right now as we speak. There's no way I can actually speak to you guys without God. I do not do this. I do not speak in front of people. This is a weakness of mine. But with God's help, I'm able to do it maybe on like a C plus level, able to speak to you guys. God's got us. That's all I'm saying. And, and, and he's really, really good at watching over us. He's been doing this for years. God's been watching over all of us for years. Just a couple years ago, well, maybe like 3,000 years ago when Moses Maybe it was like 3,000 years ago when Moses, is, when Moses um, after Moses' death, imagine like being Joshua and how that may have felt. 
you have to, you have to deal with the death of Moses, and now you're called to lead the people to the promised land. And then you're told to follow all the instructions, follow all the instructions that Moses has um, laid out. And that probably was overwhelming. He probably had challenges, but God was with Joshua. And if you don't believe me, let's look in our Bible, and I'm pretty sure God was with Joshua. We pick it up with Joshua 1, 9. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So what God is doing is he's in, he's assuring Joshua he can be strong and courageous. And Joshua may have felt overwhelmed, but God is letting him know that he is with him so Joshua can find comfort in that. And although God is speaking specifically to Joshua, God wants the same thing for us. God wants us to be, have courage. He wants us to be strong, and when, we, when, we be, when we're overwhelmed or we have those tough challenges that we're about to face, like we don't have to face them alone. We can find comfort knowing that God is with us. The, the, the two scriptures that I've the two scriptures that I've preached or we, that I talked about so far, these are very, very popular scriptures. And they're really nothing new. And these scriptures, they've, they've already been preached. And I really can't tell you something new. All I can do is make them relatable and testify to the hope that they bring me and in the hope that you will find faith and live life more abundantly and not just like, Wait for the next big thing or, or, or wait, whatever's just going to bring you instant happiness or gratification, but actually take a step back and trust God's process and God's plan and actually just believe in Jesus that he has you and he's going to guide you and he's going to be there for you and you're going to live life a little bit better. You're not going to have to do anything on your own. He's always going to be with you. And when I talk about faith, it's, it's, it's hard for me to, so it was hard for me to put together a sermon about faith because I grew up in church and, and sometimes I would feel like I'm not doing enough or I need to have more faith. And I don't want to really like speak that anybody needs to have more faith. Like where you're at, what your walk with God is where you need to be. And if you have, if you have doubts with God, like that's okay if you're angry with God that's okay. Like, you can speak to God and let him know that you are angry with him. Like, our emotions, like, God can deal with our emotion. He is so much more bigger than our emotions, so it's so, it's okay to have those emotions. So, please, if, I, I, if I'm speaking, don't feel like you need to leave here doing more. I just really want you to be encouraged. I just want you to be encouraged to have more faith. That's all I want. That's all I'm trying to do and just be encouraged to actually believe in God. So when we go through stresses or we, we feel depressed or we have that anxiety that we're just not alone and we know that God is with us. I have, I have one more scripture. Uh, worship team, you guys can come back up. I have one more scripture for you guys, and it's going to be another, it's going to be another popular scripture, one that you've seen or heard preached before, but when you, when you hear it this time, I want you to really take it in, and I really want you to see it as God's promise to you. If we go to Jeremiah 29, 11. You guys see it? For I know the plan I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. 
So this isn't just an inspirational quote. This isn't just a post. This isn't like motivational speaking. This is from God to you. Plans to give you hope. Plans to give you a future. This is the hope that we all can hold on to. And this is the word that we all can walk in. So just know that God's word is God's word. And really just, uh, just, just hold on to hope. And this scripture, this scripture right here I feel like is real powerful because I feel like this is coming straight from God. I'm, I'm going to close in prayer. Father, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for all of us. And I pray that you just continue to walk over, watch over us and give us peace and give us hope. Father, I pray that you continue to guide us in our lives. I pray that you be there wherever we go. And when we have those difficult times, I pray that you be with us. In your name, I pray. Amen.